afternoon. My children, once again, you're welcome for this lesson, uh, lesson four of social studies. As you all know, we began on uh, looking at uh, OAU, the Organization of African Unity. And uh, like I said it before, it is uh, an organization that was formed majorly to bring cohesion, to bring togetherness among the African countries. I don't want to talk much. I want us to try to run very fast into this work and see that we finish it. When we talk of OAU, there are certain important areas I would want you to focus on, especially when you are to answer certain questions in the future. So important things to note about OA. That's where I want us to focus. You need to note the abbreviation as well. Or stand for stands for organization. 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 Or we shall add that. A stands for African. It's very important for you to note, take note of these letters and what they stand for. U stands for unity. Stands for unity. So in the full, is organization of African unit. That's point number one, you need to note. Take note of the word, the letters, and what they stand for. Point two, which I want you to take note of. Remember there were two, two blocks that had differing ideas about Africa coming together as a continental body. And later on, these two blocks come together and harmonize their positions and agree to move as one to have a united Africa. So a certain president by then of Benin suggested, in his contributions, he suggested a name for the organization of OA. It did not come from, you know, it did not fall like rain. Somebody sat and thought about it and brought a good name to unite the two blocks. So we have to remember this man as well, as far as the organization of African unity is concerned. So we need to take that as something very important as far as the OAU is concerned. So, point next to note. The name of the OAU was suggested by Abat Manga Abat Manga the president president of the name by then it was also called the Homer. So that's the African leader that suggested the name of the organization of African Unity to have the two blocks together. Another important thing you need to note about the OA is that uh, it came into inception on 25th May 1963. So point next we are saying the OA came into existence 
resistance on felt surface May 1963. Take note of that. They shouldn't ask you the year of its formation and you can't tell. We are saying it came into existence, it came into inception, or it was founded on 25th May 1963. That's when it became a continental body and functional. Another point I want to take note of as far as OA is concerned is that uh, the meeting for the formation of OAU took place in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. That's very important, and I want to also take note of that. So we are saying OAU, the meeting for the formation of OAU, the leaders by then met in the capital city of Ethiopia called Addis Ababa. They are around to their questions that you need to take note of. The city where it took place and the country that hosted the meeting. So Ethiopia hosted the meeting in the cap its capital city and that's very crucial, that's very paramount that you need to take note of as far as OA formation is concerned. Another important thing or not I want you to take care of as far as OA is concerned is that uh, the meeting was chaired by Emperor Haile Selassie, the leader of Ethiopia by then. And therefore, he became the first chairman of OA. In their charter, that was a provision in that the host country, the leader of that host country, became automatically the president. I mean, the leader became the chairman of the, of, of, of the organization. And it is still the same with AU currently. The host country or that country where the meeting of the organization takes place in that very year becomes the chairman. So we are saying Emperor Harris Lass became the first chairman of OAU simply because the first meeting took place in his country, in the city of Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So that's another important point that I would want to take note of. That is very important. We are saying the first chairman was Emperor Haile Selassie, simply because the first meeting of the organization took place in Ethiopia. I want to, to take note of those areas, they are very important. The first OAU in short, this is how we abbreviate it, and letter O stands for organization. Organization. O A stands for 
African. And then U stands for unity. Why? It was a continental body that was intended to bring many countries together as a continental block. The other point, like I said before, that I want to take a note of, the name of OAU was brought or suggested by, by the African leader by then called Herbert Maga. The name is Herbert Mag and he was the president of Benin by then. Take a note of that as well. The other one is that uh, we are saying the date of its formation, the date of, for it to start functioning as a continental body, it was on 21st May 1963. The other point which I've already put here, that uh, Ethiopia is the African country that hosted the meeting, and it was in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, right? And we are saying because the meeting took place in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, Emperor Harris lost the leader of Ethiopia by then, there and then became the first chairman. These are areas that we need to take note of. Now, I want us to look at uh, reasons for this organization coming into existence. Yes, we may have hinted about them before, but I want us to write something down as far as the reasons for the formation of this organization is concerned. So we shall term reasons to be objectives as well. Why this organization was to be put in place? What was to be its mandate? What was it supposed to do? How was it supposed to serve Africans? That's what I want us to look at as well. Those are the same as objectives. Reason number one, to unite independent African countries into one big family. They wanted African countries to work together as a one continent, as a family, without isolation, basing on boundaries. So point number one, it was to unite Independent, dependent African countries and one big family. It was to unite the independent. Remember, independent, condition number one, that qualified the country to become independent, I mean to become a member of the organization, it must have had obtained or attained high independence from our colonial master. Meaning, any country that was still under colonialism, like South Africa by then, could not become a member. So it was specifically a block to bring together countries that had already attained independence. That's objective or as a reason number one. Reason number two, to end all forms of colonialism and neo-colonialism in Africa. Last time we talked, to, we discussed a lot about colonialism and about neo-colonialism. And I'm very sure these are not new ones uh, to you. So point number two, two. to end all forms, all forms of colonialism and neo, neo, neo-colonialism in Africa. That was intention number two, to 
to end all forms of neocolonialism and neocolonialism. There was no any intention beyond that, to fight colonialism, to liberate Africans, to set them free from the white man's hand. Point next, my class, it was to defend the sovereignty, sovereign, sovereignty. Actually, that word is not sovereignty, it's sovereignty. Sovereignty. Hope you're getting me well. The word is not sovereignty, we don't pronounce that letter G. We omit it in our pronunciation. So the word is sovereignty. And we are saying it was to defend the sovereignty of the independent African countries. To defend the sovereignty, sovereignty of the independent African countries. Sovereignty, remember we said the countries were, when we talk of sovereignty, we are looking at a country being able to possess its own resources, use resources, make her own laws without interference from, the, uh, from a foreign power or from a foreign country or any other powers beyond that are, with, that are not within their frontiers. So we are saying African countries needed to come together to be able to defend their resources to make their own laws that are not subject to their colonial masters. That was very important and it could be possible by then, given the fact that they were still weak militarily, financially, economically, politically, it was very important that they come together to be able to avert, to be able to change, to be able to repose, or to fight off any force that could do undermine their sovereignty. Reason next, there are quite a number, but I will give you around four or five. Reason next, why the OA was founded as well, to prevent any attempt of recolonizing any African country. In other words, any country of Africa that had, had attained independence, they wanted that particular country to continue being independent without again interference by the colonial master. It was possible that these countries could fail economically, could fail politically, and therefore it could create a virtue for these colonial masters to come and take them over. So the OA was to be st to stand in there to bridge the gap, to close the gap, to prevent any way that could you know attract these colonial masters back to take over them. So point next we are saying two. to prevent an attempt, the word is attempt, another word to mean this is to try, prevent an attempt of recolonizing Africa or African countries. by their colonial masters. Hope you appreciate that, my people. Lastly, I know you'll read and get more other points. The last point on this, it was to promote, it was to promote friendship between Africa and the rest of the world other countries of the world. Much as African countries are being independent and they are claiming, claiming for autonomy, claiming for independence, claiming for sovereignty and the rest, 
They needed us as well, as countries in the world. They needed us, you know, they still needed other people in the world to help them. So they needed their uh, bargaining power, they needed their position protected. So we are saying Africa needed to keep close touch, keep, to keep in close contact with other continents of the world. So this body was to act as a link eh, to connect Africa or African countries with the rest of the world. So lastly, we are saying to prevent, to, to, to promote, promote friendship, friendship between Africa, Africa and between Africa and other countries of the world. Right? So friendship, friendship is very important. You can have friendship with people who are close to you. You can as well maintain friendship with the people who are very far away from you. That's very important, and Africa needed to do that. So I hope you appreciate as to why our leaders, our fathers, political our fathers, came up with the idea of having a continental body called the African Organization of African Unity. These are some of the reasons they put forward to convince us why the Organization of African Unity was necessary, why Africans, well, it was important for us to work together. I want us to, last, the last bit of my lesson today, I want us to look at some of the founder members of OAU. Founder, not all countries were members. There were specific countries that qualified to be members, and these were majorly countries that had acquired independence by then. There were not uh, many, there were not as such uh, many, there were still a few, but of course, in one of their agenda was to ensure that those that were not independent could acquire independence. So I wanted us to come up with a list of those founder members of OAU. But in this table, I'm, I'm going to do a sort of a table for you. But in this table, I'm going to leave some space or gaps for you to fill. Because I know you're familiar with some of this information. I don't want to spoon feed you as if you're in nursery class. Eh? You must be part of the lesson as well. So prepare to fill in this table as well as we conclude our lesson. We have a table. Our head will be very simple. Examples. Examples of founder members, founder members, members of OAU. Examples of founder members of OAU. Examples of founder members of OAU. So we are saying we shall have we shall have two columns. One name of the leader. We shall have name of the leader. Name of the leader. Of the leader. And then on the other side we shall have uh, we shall have uh, the country the leader belongs to two. The country of founder states. Founder member state. Founder member 
Mema Stitch. by leaving the gap here. A gap for you to fill. And I'll give you the count to Ghana. Come up with the leader by then. We have the third one. We have the third one as uh, Gamel Abrunas. Gamel Abdul Nasa. He came from Egypt. He came from a country called Egypt. He was an African leader from Egypt. Please have this. They are filled all. Then we had uh, we had uh, leopard. Leopard. Senga. Leopard. Leopard. Sengo. Sengo. Hope oh, this is the proper pronunciation. It's not my name. Don't expect me to pronounce so well. Now that Sengo we are saying was from Senegal. Was from an African country called Senegal. Yeah. We had that one as well. There is this one as well. Apollo. Milton. Obote. I want to give the cup to where this man belongs. I can afford. Eh? I want to give you the sixth one. We had, uh, I want to come up with the leader here. I've given you the country. Tanzania. We good. Hmm? Then we have seven. We shall write uh, Kenya and come up with the leader by hand. So fill in those gaps and in an exam you can easily find a table of this kind. I want to get used to such kind of you know information. Get used to that. It is very important. I feel that's enough for today. I want to thank you for paying your attention. That is all AU. We still have a lot to, I will not give you much uh, some other assignment apart from the assignment I've given you here concerning the table. I feel it is enough. It will keep you going. Thank you for listening. May the good Lord bless you. Please and please, please and please, I want to say it again. Stay safe. Stay safe. May the good Lord preserve you until we meet again. Thank you.